Uh, we want to go ahead and go through the real quick by the speech that we always make at every PAC meeting and I've been making it lately. PAC is non-political. I'm going to say it again. PAC is non-political. We as an organization do not endorse any particular candidate and at any PAC function we do not issue or hand out any campaign information or literature from any candidate. So that's our little stump speech that, you know, Duff and Troy and all of us figured out that we need to make known. Uh, tonight's meeting is going to run a little bit different. We, uh, the last meeting that we had was more of, a, I guess, a venting type meeting, which we really walked away with not actually anything accomplished. And for those of you who know me know that in the PAC organization, we'd like to at least have something accomplished at the end of the next meeting besides when the next meeting is going to be. Uh, that failed to happen last meeting, so we apologize for that. This meeting was called together. Um, what was it? This, what did we accomplish? Oh, yeah, we'll we're, we're get Haley to talk about that. Throw on the spot here in a minute. Um, going forward tonight, uh, Chief Williams and, and Duck are going to pretty much take the lead on, on the meeting because for some reason um, some people are not attending this PAC meeting because of, because of myself. Uh, because I'm the president of PAC, but I'm also a candidate for city council, so they feel that it's a conflict, so they're not attending. So I'm going to step aside as of tonight um, and going to let Troy and Duck and Chief Williams pretty much take the show and I'm going to be pretty much a participant until after the election. Uh, Troy and Duck, all like I said, all the chairmen, co-chairmen of PAC and I just have to be the president of PAC but it seems like my being, being the president is keeping some people away and they need to be here. So we're going to eliminate myself from the equation. That was the announcement I was going to make for everybody. And with that being said, I'm going to let Troy and, and Duck start off. Um, anybody that's got anything to say on their hearts and anything to say, we're going to give you about 15 minutes to vent, frustrate, whatever's going on, and then we're going to go into the, uh, the portion of the meeting as far as trying to establish some type of plan in place to address um, some of the crime issues. Uh, we're also going to talk about some of the, the, if we need, I know we got Brian Stevenson here. If everybody knows Brian Stevenson, everybody knows that living in Statesman, his dad has got his hand on so many people in Statesman because he ran Garfield Rec, just like Eric Higgins is running Benton Center. In our day, we had uh, June, June Stevenson, and uh, he's the, uh, Brian, Eric is the new June Stevenson of today's time, but June had his hand on everybody in Statesman uh, as far as recreational programs and stuff like that. So we're glad to have his son here tonight because uh, he can attest to the fact that, and it's like Eric, I'm glad we have him also, attest the fact that we do need more recreational facilities and more recreational programs to keep some of these kids out of the streets. Uh, as y'all know, last night we had a, a, a store got robbed last night about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, just to give you a real quick rundown, over the weekend they had a, a shooting. Nobody got shot, just a random shooting uh, over the weekend. So we still have a lot of areas of opportunity to work through. Uh, the sheriff did enlighten me today uh, when he's telling me that State Police Department has requested the sheriff's office to, uh, for assistance over this area. Uh, this is not in the South States area, but just all the states. So the sheriff will be in the police department will be working out, I guess, some type of uh, details from there. The only thing about that is that, as everybody knows, the sheriff's office um, has the jurisdiction in the city limits, but they don't normally, per se, patrol the city limits because they deal with county. So his personnel and his budget are based on county population and the size of the county. So I say all that to say this. If the sheriff's department comes in and patrols the city station, the city council is going to have to offset the sheriff's budget by throwing some type of uh, pay toward the deputies to come in because the sheriff's office does not have enough deputies to patrol the county and to patrol the city at the same time. Now, as far as having an officer, uh, as far as having a deputy stationed in the city limits. Now, when it's passing through, that's fine, but uh, having a deputy stationed, so they're going to have to work out some type of formalities and deals with that. But that's neither here nor there. I just want to put that out that that's in the works. Um, Chief Williams is here from Morsel. Like I said, he's been a great partner with PAC. Uh, one of the things that he wants to go on, I think John Stafford had mentioned this at the last meeting, is a game planning session. So tonight, Chief Williams will be addressing that as far as a game planning session. And since you know he's here, I'm not going to speak for him or tell you what the program is about. I'm going to let him do that. Um, right now, I'm going to call Duck up and let Duck address some of the issues. As far as Duck's been a law enforcement from old school. So in my day, I, this is the officer that I rode with when I was a sheriff's officer. I mean, it was like, what, every day? They, I was rolling with him so much, they called me his shotgun. Um, so almost every summer, every day he worked, I was right there alone with him, um, and he stayed on Whitesmith Road. So I, I learned pretty much my fundamentals of, of policing from Duck. 
Uh, he can go in any neighborhood, and I wouldn't say he can go in any black neighborhood and can defuse the situation faster than any black officer I've ever seen. Uh, just because his personality and his demeanor. Uh, he treated everybody the same. I mean, like I said, I rode with him for what? Two years, wasn't it? Two years. The only thing bad about him, he's a Marine. Other than that, he's all right. Because, yeah. you know, Army, I'm an Army man, and he's a Marine. You know, we don't get along too well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Duck, like I said, we're going to let him take it over, and then I'm going to sit my butt down. I thank you all for having me here, uh, and I appreciate all those that help us with PAC. Just to give some of you a little fresher, refresher, why, why did J.D., Troy, and I come up with the idea of PAC, which is Police and Community Together, uh, simply boils down to Troy and I both are old school type style of officers, and we actually went through rookie school together uh, uh, in Wilkes County. At, at that time, Iredell County didn't even have a program to teach basic law enforcement training. Uh, so we go back a few years. We came through at that time in law enforcement to where just by an officer's presence, whether he was a policeman, a deputy, or a trooper, the, the, there was an automatic amount of respect that went to that uniform, just because of who they are and who they were. But by the same token, all of us had those encounters with an officer, again, whether it be a deputy, a trooper, or a policeman, that we respected that took the little time to, to steer us on the right track. We also had those stories of those not so nice encounters, whether it was personal or whether it was someone we knew had one of those. And Troy and I especially uh, were raised by old school parents. And what that simply meant, when JD started our meeting off today, he said, I apologize if you don't like our prayer. Folks, I respect your choice to choose whether you want to pray or not, but I'm not going to apologize to you because I love my God and Jesus Christ. And if you're having to do that at home, then that's part of what our problem is. And if you don't like that, you're in the wrong place if you're going to listen to me. But we was raised that way. Uh, we was also raised to where it wasn't just your mom or dad that would spank you if you was misbehaving but it was every neighbor that could see you, every other family member that could see you. And, and let's just face it, as generations gone by, people said that that was not appropriate and that's, your teachers really didn't need to spank you no more because some of them were being excessive. Some of the parents were being excessive. And, and as a society, we have gotten smarter and come up with more creative ways to punish our children uh, because Dr. Spock told us don't crush their spirit. Well, I never knew Dr. Spock, but my mom didn't really care a whole lot about what he said on raising the child. My mother went with one of our great clergy from Charlotte. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Billy Green. He said, if you tell a child you're going to do something, then do it. Whether that is a reward or whether that is a consequence, if you tell them you're going to do it, do it. So parents learn bad habits because we saw it or heard it somewhere else. I can remember one, I heard somebody tell a little girl, if you don't stop that, I'm gonna pull every hair in your head out. Well, let's think about that for a second. Are we really gonna watch a parent or is a parent really gonna do that? Of course, there's been a couple of idiots try that. But in general, that is a parent saying something that's not realistic. Now, it don't matter if that child is 4, 8, or 14. They've already figured out mom's not pulling my hair out. So you've just lied to that child. Your credibility starts going worse from there. And even Billy Graham said, if you tell them you're going to knock their teeth out, then you best do that. Now, I'm not telling any of you all, go home and start knocking your children's teeth out. I'm not saying that. I am saying, tell them for real what you want of them. If you give them realistic expectations and goals that they can achieve and you remind them on a daily basis that you love them and you, they are the reason that you are who you are, then you start to have a better family at home. If you start having that kind of family and then we start doing, what did all of us old people do back in the day? We as nosy as all get out of We knew what was happening at the neighbor's house just like we knew what was happening at our house. 
You pick up the phone and call somebody. You see what Sally's doing down there? Where'd she get the money for that car? Who, who, who did she talk to down at the bank? Well, we know what they was doing after church, don't we? All these innuendos go on. But the fact of the matter is, that gossip and that kind of close-knit community, that's the way we was raised. And that in law enforcement, when I showed up in a community, it didn't matter to me if it was white, if it was Hispanic, or if it was African American, or if it was black, or if it was cosmopolitan was the new word they started teaching me before I got out. And that one meant they're not really attached to one specific thing, nor should you classify them as one specific thing. Cosmopolitan is the modern person. Don't call them anything. I guess that's where these kids can put on an application. They don't know if they're male or female. Well, folks, again, I'm from the old school. Boys' bathrooms are for boys. Girls' bathrooms are for girls. And if you don't know which one you belong in, then don't come in where I'm at. Simple as that. Say your prayers, love on one another. And Troy and I have talked about it for years. When we got out of a car, if you was the bad guy, I still called you sir. Why? It's not just a southern charm thing that we call people ma'am and sir. I had this story I'll tell you about in a, in a grocery store. My twin boys were somewhere in the neighborhood of three years old, maybe four at the time, and uh, I had took them in, both of them into the grocery, and of course, as kids do, I want this, I want that, and before we started, I said, don't ask for nothing. Now, how many of y'all done told your kids that? It's not because you don't want them to have anything. Why do we tell them that? Slowing you down. What'd you say? Slowing you down. No, we're realistically, you got more money than I got, that's your reason. <laughs> we can't afford to get everything they want. Now, we don't turn around and explain all that to our kids. We simply tell them, you're not getting it, so don't ask. Now, that particular day, I had a little extra, so I said, look, y'all behave, and when we get done, each one of you get to pick out one thing, food item that you want like dessert or something of that nature, candy, whatever it is. We went through the store and they both were good boys and not, not an issue. And I'm standing up at the line, getting ready to check out, and one of my sons put his little hand up beside my jaw and said, Daddy, didn't you say if I behaved I could get something? I said, I did. Yes, sir. Did y'all hear what I just said? I did, yes, sir, to a three or four-year-old child. Then my other son, what about me, Daddy? I said, you too, son, you too. So let's turn around and go get it. I see this lady who was overtly large make some comment like, no, I didn't hear that man just call that chap a sir. Now, for all you younger generations, some of you old people tell them what a chap is. A goat. A goat. <laughs> See why they army people? <laughs> we went uh, and got their things and come back and this lady, for whatever reason, wanted to stick her nose in my business and went on to tell me, without talking to me, but talking to a cashier, that that's what's wrong with the society today is we got fully grown men calling babies, sir. I'm here to tell you that is the problem today because a lot of people didn't teach their children how to say sir and ma'am. And I looked at her and it dawned on me who she was. And I start smiling and just shake my head and say, I don't want to say nothing from my sons. And then she said something about me smiling like that was bothering me. And I said, look lady, the best thing you can do is just close your mouth You've done probe to everybody that's listening to you in here, you're ignorant. Now that's another word we quit using a while back, it's ignorant. What does that simply mean? You're not smart, you're ignorant, you're dumb, you're not trying to learn anymore, you're closed-minded. And she said, who are you to call me that? I said, you the same lady when I arrested your son this past Saturday night was telling me that he didn't do nothing and he was with you the whole time? What about it? I said, so you was lying for your son. I'm calling my son, sir, trying to teach them a lesson in life, and you were lying for your son when I took his ass to jail. Now, which way do you think is going to work better at the end of the day? 
kind of makes sense to me. But going back to Troy and I and our old school ways, when we got out of the car, we called people sir or ma'am until they wanted to talk to us differently. Now, I can tell you, being in the Marine Corps, I got a vocabulary a lot of you all just don't want to get me started on. But if that's the way you prefer to communicate with me, I'm good. My drill instructors made me a lot better at it than I thought I ever could be. But I learned how to use that file and vile language because around men and men only at that time, it was just one of the ways of communicating. I'm not saying it was godly. I'm not saying it was right. I'm saying that's what we did. But when you come back to the community, I learned very quick. If I walk up to a person and say, sir, hand me your driver's license. And if he starts cussing at me, I say, sir, hand me your driver's license or I'm going to remove you from the car. And if he continued cussing at me, I could physically remove him from the car. And I had all these witnesses talking about how nice I was and what a rear end this guy was being. So we learned early on before it became a community policing teaching tactic, give people the respect that you want them to give you in return. There's always exception to the rule. There is. Troy and I both had multiple encounters to where you can say, sir or ma'am, all you want to, it don't matter. You've got to take it to that next physical level to affect an arrest or in some instances with me, we're using firearms toward one another. I thank God that I'm still here able to talk to you. Because why they in can't, those I can only explain they chose not to for fear of it being politics. I can tell you, for those of you that know me personally, I'm political. I used to be the mayor in Troutman. That was a political position. I am the registered deeds for the county. That's a political position. But did you all, anybody hear me say, you need to go and register and vote for me because that's why I'm here? That had nothing to do with that. When I was a deputy for years, I had no clue that eventually I'd be mayor in Troutman. I had no clue that I would eventually be the registered deeds for the county. It, it was not. But everything is political because there's a cost reward to it. But for a law enforcement agency to avoid a community meeting place because of fear of politics, to me simply means there is a severe miscommunications and understanding of the goal. When that same agency reaches out to the sheriff's office and says, we need your help, it's beyond us, it got political. Why? Somebody's got to pay for that help. Now, do you give up two or three police officers and let the sheriff's office come in and, and basically do your job? Is it that they do their job differently or are they answering to different voters? I mean, why would we do that? unless we simply can't perform. Well, if we can't perform and that agency head says, come and help me, then it goes back to being political. Somebody needs to pay the bill. For everybody that lives in the county that is already paying for their allotment of deputies, they don't want to incur a higher expense so that that deputy can now come in the cities and patrol. Me being a former mayor in Troutman, we utilize the county in certain things, like drug enforcement. We was a small enough agency to where we, we had a one-man narcotics unit. Well, anybody with half a brain realizes that don't work out too good. So we got out of the one-man narcotic unit business. But somebody's got to pay. If, if this area truly needs enforcement, then somebody's got to pay that bill. To me, it goes back to our basic fundamentals of how we was raised. One, parents have got to be responsible parents of their own children. To a fault. Y'all remember that old saying, it's going to hurt me worse than it's going to hurt you? And we all knew that was baloney. <laughs> well, at some point in time, it does. Because as I told my children, when you was a child, you were supposed to think like a child. Now that you're a young adult, I should have done put enough whippings on you to where I shouldn't have to do it no more. And when they get a certain size that they can challenge me, I still have the advantage in my pocket. They got to go to sleep sometime. <laughs> they still not going to run my house. 
and that is the problem and all over this county not just this community is you got 13 year olds telling mom and dad I'm not going to school and they don't you got 14 year olds standing up in school threatening teachers and they get suspended and put somewhere else well it's a revolving door so let's go back to the fundamentals of timeouts or whatever form of punishment works for you I know what worked for me in Troy I don't think a timeout would have worked too good for us back in the day. But we didn't turn out half so bad. Uh, my twins like the fact that I'm old on one hand because they get by with some stuff that younger parents wouldn't let them by with. But they hate it on the other hand because they know I will knock them out. I'm not, one of them told me one time I'll call social services. I said, son, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to get your phone out and start filming this ass whipping you're getting ready to get. Because when I get done with you, they need to take you somewhere. That's what needs to happen. Now, if I offended any of you all with language, I didn't mean to do that, but I was in the Marines. Uh, but please, be nosy neighbors. I'm here to please stay, be and responsible. I, got, I know people's and everything. But my question is, uh, uh, you know, everybody in here got a, had an opportunity. Everybody got an opportunity in him. I, everybody in here has had an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, so I, so. I bleed so, bleed so. You know, I'm a little older than everybody. I bleed so. And uh, uh, it seems like everybody uh, that's in this sector that I've been doing research on is not, it's not having an opportunity. And uh, just a mile away, I'm less than a mile away. They don't have opportunity and uh, second chances and third chances. You know, I don't had a, a whole bunch of chances in my life. You know, uh, what the chances are uh, we can uh, reform some of these people that commit these crimes. You know, I know some of them too. I can, I know. I can tell you statistically, reform don't work. Oh, reform don't work. It don't what work. work then? It don't work statistically. What Why works? Sti work? You want me to ask you a question? Yeah. What works statistically is you educate and you teach to do better and different. Just like you said, take advantage of those opportunities out there. How many of you ever went and applied for a job and didn't get it? Now just think if we all just said that's it, I'm not going to ask nobody else for a job. The point is, you got to knock on a door and you're probably going to be told no, but then go knock on another door. As parents, we need to teach our children the basic things that the Bible teaches us, Ten Commandments first, but then we need to teach them the extra things, respect and love thy neighbor, which is most important. And, and once you get that part done, that don't mean you're going to go get the job you want. Right, right. That just means that you've got the will to fight and go knock on another door until you do get a job. Now, how many of you all got that one job and then you never went and got another one? That's kind of my point. We're all looking for the greener pasture. So you got to keep knocking and you got to keep hustling. What's well, your next question? Well, what about them felons, though? Because you know everybody in the lower sector, uh, you know, it's kind of like a you. You know, I did a little research. Well, it ain't all a uh, whole you, but it's kind of like you from like Bear Mind and. Uh, 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 Rolling Lane, Rabbit Town, you got the South Side where we get right now. Uh, you got uh, Park Drive, you got Buffalo, you got uh, Beacon Street, you know, and then everything else is on the outside of all of that. I, I think I would be a liar if I stood here and said what you just said is not as true as you're trying to make it sound. I would be a liar. What I can tell you, uh -huh. again, from what we're teaching our children. And everybody in this room has saw it. To where we're teaching our children it's okay to say no and it's okay to put your hand out and ask for a handout. When I was raised, you didn't do that. Oh, I know. When I was raised, you didn't go to school on free lunches. Mm -hmm. You might be eating a lot of mayonnaise sandwiches, mm -hmm. but you didn't go get free lunch at school. That was an embarrassment. We as a society have built a platform to where drawing we. help is perfectly fine. We. The magic number is half four children and the government will pay for it and that's like making $42,000 a year. That's the fact. 
But we're not doing anything to get that education away from that. We started this organization to, to get a better communication with the police and what the community is doing. And my thing is, you know, I work this side of town. And not only that, but to educate the public of what the police are doing and what they're trying to do, and you as well. You know, some of the questions that you should be asking, some of the things you should do in reps to a uh, traffic stop. You know, if an officer's not uh, doing it right, you also have the right to ask some questions. And how do you go about doing that? As has been said in previous meetings, you know, we've, we've uh, talked about it. On the street is not the way to do it. If you got a problem, then you need to go to the chief or whoever that supervisor is, ask to the supervisor and complain. It's not the hell of that right there on the street. Again, yes, I am passionate about it because uh, I, I live here still and I work this side of town. I retired out of Charlotte. I've seen things that's happening in the community that bothers me so bad, especially with our younger kids. And I'm still involved, you know, uh, coaching, do some rationing and coaching. I see some of them that I deal with that, you know, was little. And it's a, really a blessing for me to see them now, where they are and what they're trying to do. And again, I'm, I'm more boots on the ground. I'm not a political uh, speaker. I don't, you know, speak that well. But if you ask me, I would tell you. You know, what do we need to do? And that's what we need to find a solution of what we need to do in reference to the community and reference to our local law enforcement. What can we do with the PAC organization? You know, give us something to work with. I am still out here in the community doing some things, but I can't do so much because I'm not in law enforcement now. But it do frustrate me when I see certain things that's going on and, and, and nothing's being done about it. So that's where you as a community, that's where you got to get involved. You know, this is all we have right now on this side of town and, and the kids having to go to other areas. There's not enough for the kids to do. And so if they're busy, what it says, you know, I don't mind is a devil's workshop, then that's what we're dealing with. But again, if you have any other questions that went with, with me, I'm sorry, go ahead. I got one. So the whole pack thing is releasing the community together, right? Yes. So obviously, we got a problem with getting the police and community together. Obviously. Yes. So, at this point, I mean, it pretty much gives you a, a pretty good view on what even the is going through right now. We as adults going through the same thing, trying to help, but if we was here, I'm pretty sure they patrol it on the south side right now. Man, they, they don't get in here with us, man. I was going to basketball. So I know they could have got to this meeting. So obviously, they really don't want to be here. I mean, two, two. To answer what you just said, I don't disagree with what you just said and the questions you just raised. But I want to point out one thing. Police chief is here. It's just not your police chief. I mean, that's awesome. I, I understand. But, but what I'm saying is when we leave, I'm not asking anybody to get angry. I'm asking them to do what Troy said and do something about it. Start writing your letters to the editor. Start making your phone calls to the news, uh, yeah, right the radio station. Oh, I didn't see him here. <laughs> make your statements to him. If you make a good enough quote, he'll put it in the paper. Now, if you say something that's kind of ignorant, he ain't putting it in the paper. I'm just telling oh, you. Yeah. I'm using the microphone. Can everybody hear me? Yes. That helped a little bit. Yes. I know everybody looking at look, look, look. We use the microphone. So, my goal here today is to be a, a facilitator. When I came to the last PAC meeting, I heard a lot of complaints, a lot of people venting. And that's okay, but that doesn't get us anywhere from, the, from then till the ending. So uh, what we do in Mooresville, when I listen to complaints and I listen to people in the community, is we try to put together a game plan on how to address those issues while also letting them be a part. So I'm not gonna talk to you, I'm gonna talk with you, okay? So I, a big part of game planning is, is you're gonna have to help me here because guess what? I don't live in states, but I live in Mooresville. And our problems in Mooresville are a little different than the problems in the states, I'm sure. Um, so we're going to be, what I'm going to be doing is asking you questions. 
and I need the community to chime in, if you would, so we can maintain order. And as a facilitator, I will cut you off if order starts to go south, okay? Because we're really here to try to do some serious business and come up with a serious solution. So please be respectful of the fact that I may have to stop you short if you start venting, because the venting session was last time, okay? So we're gonna try to come up with a plan here so that JD or Doug or Troy can actually take a plan that the community believe, make, believes will work to resolve what the issues that you've identified are. That makes sense? Okay, so my first question is to, to this group, and I'm asking you to raise your hand, and I'll call on you individually, uh, is what is the problem? Because I've heard a domino of problems, but what is the problem? Yes, ma'am. What, what is the problem as far as the crime? What's the problem as far as the city? city? What's the problem that, that you see as a issue that we need to address as PACs? that the city leaders may need to know about? One of the primary problems that I see is that they're not here. Okay. And it's just that simple. So they're not here now. They're not communicating with the public when they are over here. They're okay. not doing community policing when they are over here. Um, they're not doing the right thing when they are over here. They call on the shortage, but then they tell us that they just hired a police officer, but they're still not actively engaged. I saw a uh, um, picture of a sheriff at the school, and it's just little things. But it's just things like this today, a lot of people feel like, okay, well, who wants to come in? Okay, so let's, let's stop right there. So can we say that the part of the problem is participation, engaged. participation, yes. engagement, and communication? Yes. Okay. Participation, engagement, and communication. Yes. All right. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I have my pad because I'll be writing too, but I'm going to try to facilitate. You'll write this down under the yeah, conduct of all day long. I got a gun. Uh, I found one. Okay. So anybody, somebody else. that. Her problem, she's already put out there. Look, give me a completely different problem. Yes, ma'am. Uh, games. Uh, games. Games. Okay. 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 Let's, let's stop there. Let's go with games because we're going to get into the meetup in a little bit in the, that was a down in the session, okay? By the way. The I didn't record this session. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but your, your part we are going to cover in, in the meet. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Prostitution. Prostitution? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I ain't going to lie, I wasn't ready for that one. But okay. That, no, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yes, ma'am. Okay, lack of resources for the youth. That's a problem. I want Eric Hagen to chime on that one. Who's Eric Hagen? That's the uh, big brother in the back. Big Eric. brother in the back. Who's Eric Hagen? Hagen. What programs do you see, that Eric, that we need? No, uh, stop. You can't do that. You can't do that. Stop. No. Hold on, Eric. Hold that thought because we're going to get down to that. Okay, because we're going to go off into a whole other area. We got to identify. Before you can come come up with a solution, you got to got to have a problem. We'll get to the uh, the, the the solution. It's, it's down in the meat there. Yes, sir. Does poverty make money? Does poverty make money? Yes. Is that a problem? That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Yes. It does. does. does it okay, so. So, pop, pop, the, so is, are you saying that the gym is the issue? Jail. Jail. You say jail. Not 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 all. Just the jail. But I, I say that's probably makes money. But if but I just knew when they twenty six million dollars here, but they just approved. Okay, but you gotta give me a problem in a form that we can document. So Okay, so that's, I, okay. It's pro you say a poverty is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Poverty. I mean, that, okay. They, they, they don't don't so why don't why don't we put poverty with, with when you talk about poverty, you talk about money and economics. Why don't we say economics? Social economics and economics. Okay, misuse of resources. I can go with that one. That's a problem. Okay. Well, now let, let me say this. Now we talk when you get into the jail issue. The jail issue is a county issue versus a city issue. Right. Okay. So you, you kind of, well, I, they're I, kind of I, separate. I know poverty makes money. I know it. Okay. Yes, sir. No location of liquor drug houses. No location. Not me. Bootleg houses. Bo bootleg houses? Yeah. Bootleg houses. Drug, put down drugs and bootleg houses. 
Yeah, I know. We are addressing it. We're addressing it. All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that would be uh, housing and zoning. Z zoning issues. So zoning issues. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what you really call it, but the only time we really ever deal with the police is a bad situation. It's not never like no. So proactivity is what you're saying. Yeah. Being proactive. Okay. Proactivity by by police. All right. So is there anything else that's not that we didn't put up here? Because I'm gonna pump this in a minute. Yes, ma'am. The shelter? The shelter. The shelter here? Okay. Okay. All right. So the shelter. So that helps us because when I when I when I take all this information back and I put it together for JD to review to take, to do whatever he's gonna do with, I know who and what entities need to get what piece. Okay. I'm sure. Gangs, gangs are not isolated states, but trust me, okay? I've been dealing with gangs my entire career. Um, all right, so we know what the problem is. Now, my next question to you, yes ma'am, you got another problem? Code enforcement? Yeah, housing and zoning, code enforcement is one. What would be your zoning issues? I put it all on the zoning. Okay, yeah, because that, that would address some of your, what we call the broken window theory. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. Okay, all right, so now my next question is, what resources need to be at the table to address a lot of these problems? What resources, okay? Yes, sir, ma'am. Those budgets that they have, uh -huh. and they're doing those things that they give them out with the taxpayer dollars, like the advanced hotel, like the grant that they for the airport. These issues are not good. Okay, so when you talk budget, are you saying city council? I'm saying city council. So city city leadership, right there, uh, team resources. We're at team resources. Who else? What other resources need to be a part of solving the problem? Yes, ma'am. We need to have as a community, mm -hmm. the community itself come together as a resource, like to help out. Okay. Like community. The community. I'm gonna throw Big Brother out there. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec is a resource. Yes. Parks and Rec is a resource. Yes, ma'am. Business leaders. Business leaders. Church. Okay, religious, the religious community. Anybody else? What other resources need to be here? So, zoning, uh, code enforcement. We've got all the links in the chain up here in case they're not connected. Okay, and, it sounds like zoning and code enforcement, and I'm sure y'all have a, uh, y'all have a planning director here. Uh, so I would put down specifically the planning director, economic development leaders. Um, and Guatson, you can just go out to the side over there. Yeah. Economic development leaders. Nikki's got a great program. What's uh, Who's your Nikki? program, Nikki? Nikki Mike, what's your program that you do every Wednesday? Who's Saturday? Nikki? Nikki? Oh, I just have a, uh, a show. I've got four co-hosts who just address community issues, issues of what's African-American. Okay. That's a that could be used as a resource. Okay. okay. That, that's a big source that it just kind of helps me. So, to be at the table. Okay, so that's actually that, that that'll fall under your communication. So um, I would put media. You are you a media outlet kind of kind of media form? Media. All right. So I think we got good group resources. Now my next question is, what are the success factors? Now here's what I mean by success factors. What is it going to take for us to reach a goal? Now we're going to pause right here for a minute because down at the bottom we're going to put a goal. I need to know from this community, what is the ultimate goal? What ultimately do you want to see happen in your, your community? And give it to me in like two sentences or less. Because if I let you go more, we're going to start rambling. So give it to me in like two sentences. For example, if I said, if I was doing something and I was talking about socioeconomics, ultimately my goal might be to be financially stable, not living check to check. You see what I'm saying? That might be my primary goal. What is the ultimate and primary goal of the community? Yes, sir. A success, successful future for the youth. No, down the bottom. Go, ultimate goal. No, no. I'm the. I'm listening to what you're saying, but I got to frame it so we can we can actually focus on it. Okay. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Ma I'm hitting these sirs and ma'am all over. Put pride back into their life. Put pride back into their life. So building community pride. Yeah. Community pride with their families and their children. 
Pride. Okay. Build the community pride. Okay. Build the community pride. All right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Safe. safe a safe community. That that's a that's a that's a, a safe community. So safety is a is a primary goal. Safety. That's that's a big one for what I'm hearing. Yes, ma'am. Restore hope. Okay. Restore hope. You mean community as a whole? Okay. Brian, you got anything you want to know this before, Brian? Well, you've been around Who's here. Who's Brian? Yeah. I'm observing. Observing, okay. When we say community, we're talking about just right here or state. Like, right, yeah. We're talking about all the states. Okay. All right, now, what factors do we need to reach those goals? That's my next question. What kind of factors do we need to reach those goals? Huh? Fairness. Fairness is a factor. You gotta have fairness. Now, who are we talking about specifically from? Everybody. See, that's impossible. I can, some, things, some things are not attainable. Some things are not factors that we can attain because I can't tell her to treat her fair. I can say it, but I can't force it. As far as this side of town is just as important as this side of town. Okay. So fairness, fairness, fairness. Uh, go back. We're gonna be under success factors. That's what I mean by fairness. Yeah, fairness. And put a hyphen. Put C. That way, it let me know we're talking about city leadership. Yes. Trust. Trust in. Trust. Okay, trust. Trust in leadership. And law enforcement. Yes, sir. Um, as a part of the police work, instead of just community policing, uh -huh. community service, so that the officers get to know the community and are part of the community as opposed to just law enforcement. Okay. Uh, just as an example, if I had an interaction with a police officer that I knew and I felt like it was in my community regularly, I felt like I might feel like that we can have, we would have a better report as opposed to if he only showed up when there was trouble. Right. Okay, I see. That's, right. that's, that's kind of that kind of goes back to that proactiveness. So I know how to frame that one. Yeah. Okay. I know how to frame that one. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No more segregation. No more segregation. <laughs> Not black and white, talking economic segregation. Yeah. Look, y'all come up with some stuff that uh, <laughs> that the United States Constitution ain't resolved yet. What are you thinking? What did you <laughs> Well, I'm just saying. I'm, the United States ain't can't solve some of these issues yet. <laughs> That's because they ain't got God in their life. That's what they probably. Well, you know. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, she's okay. I'll give her that. <laughs> hey, you gotta find some kind of time. Well, I want to recognize real quick, we got a pastor, a new pastor just came in that just joined uh, our community. Who's uh, that? Right in the corner. Pastor, they ain't going to hand up. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want to recognize him? Yeah. Cedric uh, Johnson. Okay. Yeah, so I want to recognize him real quick. But anyway, go ahead, Chief. When you talk about segregation, you got you to gotta nail in there a little, little okay. title for me. Okay. Because well, we're talking about Statesville. So tell me about segregation in Statesville. There are How certain areas in Statesville, particularly Southside and Rabbit Town, that have been segregated, like we have been put on an Indian reservation. <laughs> oh, Ever since they have built Gardner Bangle Boulevard all the way down, we've been put on the back burner since 1985. Okay. So there's a lot of things that have not come over here that a lot of the other communities in our don't get. Yeah, we need to build community bridges and partnerships. Instead of okay. firing it. Well, we invited all of them here tonight. Like I said, Pat's trying to be non-political. We That's invite right. all city leadership here tonight also. So now let's get down to our challenges. What, what, what are the challenges that keep us from attaining these goals out at the bottom? Yes, ma'am. Power. Okay. 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 Control and power. Lack of. Uh, just like he said, the reason why they weren't here was because of management, but until management approved them to be here with us, I mean, it's going to be the same struggle over and over. But my thing is, like I've said before, the people are the true power. So, I mean, they basically just, and, and I'm getting on my soapbox, sticking their finger up to us the, as a community. I mean, let's just call it what it is. What other challenges you got? Lack of communication. That's a good challenge. That, that, that is a good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know that it, it can be fixed if you have the right people in the right places, but there's still segregation. It doesn't matter 
I think segregation is a good challenge because, because if you have people separate, separated, you're never going to have that unity. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a, a good challenge. Any other challenges? Yeah, the opportunity, opportunity is, 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 is. I agree with that. The opportunity is a challenge. Opportunity. They don't give people uh, a chance to change. Who is they? Huh? Who is they? Society. You know. You know. I mean, you see the unemployment. But so that would be you, because you're. We're all a part of society. Yeah, well, what means you? Gotta, you gotta I, narrow I, it in I, for me. I, 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 you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring that in. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, you gotta give people an opportunity to change. Okay. First, we gotta give them a chance. Okay, opportunity. So okay, I can agree with that. Anybody else got any challenges? Yes, ma'am. Unemployment is a big challenge. All right. Now, my, yes, ma'am. Resources. We need money on this side. I, I'm telling you, we got fifty-seven million dollars spent downtown, but we you know you got one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. We'll probably be spent over here, right? Here's some of the things that we're going to address with the, with the, the, team, the team players. Uh, now, let's get into the stages. What stages is it going to take for us to, as, as stages? More tasks, more tasks than stages in this situation. What tasks are going to be necessary for us to reach those goals? Yes, sir. When I was a kid, like 18 years old, I was going to say they were to the army. They were going to go straight to the army. I've never heard of them say they were going to be a police officer or a correctional officer. Got to train them at 18, 19, as soon as they get out. Okay, so oh, what I'm hearing is we got to change the culture when it comes to the youth, right? right. So changing youth culture. I agree. I agree with that. But I get the concept of what you're saying. By the time they reach that age, they're already made. They're, it's already ingrained in their minds. What you're saying. So I agree with that. Even even childlike programs start them out early, like. Uh, uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll take it to him. <laughs> and I'm like you, because I, I do, I get personal with it. The last visual, I was, she can tell you, I was face to face with the chief, telling him the same thing that you're saying. Because I have had, I have had encounters as well. I'm retired. I don't want to kill anybody's child. And again, I don't want to be killed. But for me to see those things, what you're saying too, and then when we have certain issues or some complaints and nothing being done about it, me as a retired police officer, that hurts. And you, sir, you are, you're exactly right. So this is what we got to do. We're going to take this. And I'm going to follow up on it. And whatever we got to do, if we got to take to the city council, we're going to do that too. But we got to make this work. Got to work. I'm sure. They keep making it seem like it's political, so I'm not being ugly. But if they had to step out of it until we get some of these issues resolved, I've heard that happened. Yeah, yeah I've heard I think it. they're using that to say this right. is political right. because they right. right. is posting it, mm -hmm. and it's not real. And they just use to me. They're just using that as an excuse. excuse to be able not to be I've, I've, I've told the city that, and everybody else. I've told them. Yeah, yeah, you're right, because you got a city councilman that's telling them not to be here. They're not going to let, excuse me, their white constituents aren't going to back them up. Come on through. 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 It is right, Julius. They, they know they failed this year. They know they failed this year. That's why they're they can say it's they failed. And we can go to the chief. Anybody can go to the chief and tell the chief. This is what's going on. We don't like it. But the chief is going to ultimately listen to his boss, which is the city manager and the city council people. And they, the city council that we have are stuck on making things pretty and not worried about people over here on the south side. And until we get together and vote those people out and put the people in there to do this, come on, 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 come You can vote. Get those people. Get your friends, your family, everybody in here has to vote. He's gone. He's gone. But again, those are some of the things that needs to be done. But anyway, like I said, we don't want to get into the political politics of it because Pat, I mean, like I said, uh, Pat is actually a service that we provide for the whole county. Uh, and Sean Eccles can attest to the trainings that we've had. We've had, Sean, I think we've had to date 72 training classes and we've had nine 
seminars, and one of the things I'll tell you about Chief Williams, and he won't be the one to tell you that, when Pat first started out, and he was for teaching the citizens their rights, we got opposition to that. Uh, that that's something that we should not be teaching to the citizens. But I, I, he'll tell you, and Chief Williams was insisting upon that, and we, he said we're going to do it. He said we're going to do it, and we've been doing it ever since. So the ultimate goal is if, you, if it's your right, it's your right. I want you to know. But I think, I think most of our law enforcement officers, most people that put on the badge guys, they really are good people. They got a tough, they got a tough job. They got, they got a tough job. Now, everything is driven by leadership, but a lot of good people put on this badge. I met a lot of good people. And let me tell you something. Like Duck, I think Duck, it was Duck that said it. There are some people. How many people in here are teachers? How many teachers in here? How many nurses? How many educators? How many preachers? How many preachers? I want y'all to know I have locked one of every one of those kind of people up. <laughs> so what, what, am I, what am I saying? My, what, what's my point to say that? Hold on. I got a point to all that. What I'm trying to say is there is good and bad in everything. Okay? There are good police officers. There are bad police officers. There are police officers who put on the badge because guess what? It's a job. They won't get laid off. And there are some who put on the badge because they give a damn. Okay? It, that's just the way it is. Okay? You have to decipher between those. Now, I like to think as a chief, I can recognize those people. Because let me tell you something. I tell people in a minute. Look, if you're not going to get on my ship to do some work and do some good, jump off before we take off. Because once I'm out in the water, I hate to throw you off. You know what I'm saying? But in my career, in my career, I have had to throw some people off the ship along with their friends and the people they're holding on to. It's just the nature of the business. But let me tell you something. I know the majority of men, more, more, more than less, put on this badge every day, willing to give up their life. Because if somebody coming in that door right now shooting, I'm going to jump on everybody I can. Now, I can cover quite a few people with my, with my muscular physique. <laughs> but I'm going I'm to jump on as many people as I can to try to save a life because that's what I put this badge on to do. I'm hiding behind you. <laughs> Somebody got to tell what happened. This pen, right, this pen, what, this pen here? Yes, sir. So what she's talking about is the pen. Number one, I got two pens on the day. But the, the, the second pen, if you come to Mooresville, you'll see every one of these officers wearing one of these pens. Pack this stands for Mooresville Police and Community Together. Pack now. What it's saying is, it signifies that whenever my officers put this pen on, they're reminded constantly that guess what? It's ain't about you, Plur. It's about the community and you working together. It ain't about the police coming out and doing it in your neighborhood alone. We go knocking on doors and say, hey, look, this weekend we're going to be doing this. Could you come and join us? It's all about us working together. I have 88 police officers. They can't police 40,000 people in Mooresville. It takes 40,000 people to police 40,000 people. So the fact that some people are not involved is, is, a, is a huge consequence to your success in this community. Everybody has to be involved. Everybody has to have a stake in what, what you want to change. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. Now, don't get me wrong. Leadership can drive that, that train. But it takes a manpower to get that train on the tracks and get it rolling down the, down the tracks. Okay? Yeah.